Okay. Hey, sorry about that, everybody. Had to, um... All right. Lots of stars. Let me make this a little tiny bit smaller. Very cool. Thank you. Um, okay. So all I had to do, I'm sorry about that. I had to switch the title of the stream, and I was getting yelled at by my boss. Garrett's a stickler. All right. So all we're going to do is go over how to... Um, to utilize everyday objects for a fine art drawing sketching purpose. So now I've got the black and you know black is a what is thought of as like maybe an outline an outline tool or you know a sketching tool. Um, drag the box down. The box is on the screen. The stickers just went away. Mr. Garrett man. All right so Okay, so with the black, you can use it as a sketching tool or a, see if I was going to draw a, a portrait, very off the side. Got my outline for my head, and I'm going to find the halfway mark. I can sketch it like here and get ink all over my hand, which is fantastic. And so that's going to be my eye mark, that half line, halfway down from this. So this is where my nose is, halfway down. My mouth is okay, so and then, you know you got your hairline, hairline here-ish, right? So this can be your outline and your sketch, just that normal black. And then I can take my blue or another color; it doesn't matter. It's totally up to you. Let's go. Let's make an alien. So we've got it green, and um, with the eyes center point, it's showing up. Cool. And something as simple as finding your little eyeball right here, a littler eyeball, and I'm just sketching, and then my nose. Down to my mouth. As you can tell, this is a really very good looking drawing. Okay, then you got your ear, usually from the eye, eye line down to the nose. It looks just like me. Garrett Leo is correct. This is a self portrait. We'll add in some eyebrows. So eyebrows usually come from right at the cusp of the eye. Up, if that makes sense. Right there, from the eye to the eyebrow. Very cool. Um, that's where you're getting your eyebrows, and they extend usually to the apex corner of the eye and up. All right, Gabriel just subscribed, amazing. Not sure what that means, but thank you, fantastic. So my lips are a little bit far down, a little too far. So I'll just sketch over it. That's all good, that looks better, that looks better. All right, so now to use these pens for shading. So we are going to pause this immaculately beautiful drawing, and we're going to come over here. So I'll tear this little guy out. Anybody doing anything interesting, anything fun today? Save him right there. So we'll get into cross hatching. Cross hatching is just a shading technique with lines. So I'm going to make some boxes. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's find the, um, let's get three different value. Remember value is the level of lightness to darkness. All right, so let's get, let's get some different values. So on the first one, I'm going to have just straight lines. Cross hatching is usually straight lines and overlapping each other for different values. So you see this is the darkest box we have now. 
right? So for the next one, I'm going to come vertically and diagonally, and we're going to see. So this should be about the same uh, value. It might be a little bit less because the first one, first one we do have it um, spread out a little bit. So I'm going to overlap on the next one or on this one the vertical, the diagonal lines as well. There we go. So you immediately see how much darker that is, right? All right. Very cool. So the third box, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to add another line to show how much darker it can get. So now we've got our verticals, and we've got our horizontals coming in hot and heavy. Where's everybody from? Drop a comment. Let's hear where everybody's from. I am in Chicago. Okay, so we have two lines, and as you can see, the value from the vertical and diagonal is about the same as the horizontal and vertical, right? So that value is about the same. So we're going to add a diagonal to this box as well and see where that goes. Chai City, baby. And Gilles Black used to be my neighbor, but, you know, come on a tangent real quick. Uh, we used to be very close, you know, walking distance, we hang out all the time, dinners all the time, but um, he moved away. So what are you going to do? Pretty far away. But, I mean, right now in this, uh, in this quarantine, we can't really be together anyway. So, I mean, it doesn't matter that now he lives halfway to Iowa and I live in Chicago. But, you know, we used to live really close to each other. John's from Indiana. John, what are you working on today, dude? Are you making art? Okay. So, as you can see here, we have three different. So, we've got one, two. Now, we've got that third. You can clearly tell how much darker it is, right? Okay. So, this last one, we'll do four directions. So, we're going to do all vertical. Is there any kind of echo going on? Any kind of sound issues, anything anybody want to warn me about? Any sound okay? All right, so we got vertical. We're gonna come in with the horizontal. John hasn't done anything today. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Okay, so we got horizontal. Coming with our third line. And I'm spacing these all the same. These are all remaining about this spacing right here, right? And I'm not doing anything crazy. I don't have a ruler. Um, I'm just using that same that same spacing is what I'm saying for vertical, horizontal, or vertical and diagonal, diagonal, vertical and diagonal, vertical, diagonal, horizontal. And for this last one, we're gonna go both diagonals to show how dark it can get with just the same color. All right, see that coming in? Timmy's comeback, streaming to us. Very cool, Timmy, thanks man. I'm sure Garrett will tell me what that means later, but super cool. Okay, so do we see there how much darker that is? What's up, Ben, my man? Okay, so can we see that? Let me raise it up a little bit. You see that we got first level, second, third, and our darkest. And, no, and we can go even darker. I'm just trying to show... How with one, with one pen, you know, one stroke. This is called cross hatching. Um, one stroke, 
how you can differentiate value, okay? So let's go on. I'm going to do some more boxes and show some different things still, all right? This is called cross-hatching. Make sure I can type that out. Okay, so this is the cross-hatching portion. Okay, so this next one, if I'm trying to show we have a light source here, we got our fancy sun like that, okay? The light's gonna be coming from here, right? So if I have a triangle, my shadow's gonna be on this side. So I could go like this. Try to give that triangle some depth on the side. And then where it's closer to this side right here, I can come in even more. Now do we see how that how that gradient, that cross hatching is coming in, John? You seeing that? Is that making sense? Thanks, Penn. Appreciate it. Right? So that's what we're talking about here. So if I'm going to do the same thing that we did here, just on a larger scale to try to show um, what we're doing, I can make this part of the box be the darker part, okay? And we'll just show how that would work out. I'm not sure why this is not... Uh... All right, cool. John's picking it up. We're good. We're good here. We're good, 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 good. Okay. So I'm going to come about halfway with some diagonal strokes. Halfway. Okay. Now what you can do with this again is I can overlay them with the same direction, uh, with the same direction and see how that makes it darker. Okay. So it's a little bit darker. Now I can tilt it again, just the same direction. All right, we've seen how it's really, it's really got a fade in there. See how that's very dark. We're not coloring. This isn't exactly like coloring, filling in the filling in the lines with with constant color. This is just playing around. If I was to fill in the lines with constant color, I could be coloring, you know, spread out my strokes that like that right but this is more of a controlled um, a controlled uh, placement of strokes and controlled uh, value gradients right so in this box we're gonna have two different gradient directions from the same thing so have the same style okay does that make sense So you see how it almost looks like it's curving? It's curving away. Like this is the far portion. This is a far portion. Very cool. Okay. So we can do that same thing in another box. We're going to do the same kind of thing. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out why my why my streaming uh, chat isn't auto uploading, isn't auto updating. So I think we're good now. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make it look like it's bouncing in from the sides. Okay. 
I'm just coming in just straight lines. I'm trying to fade it. How's that? That works out pretty good. Looking pretty, looking pretty decent. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fade this bottom portion as well and try to make it look like a mound. Feel free, I would definitely be turning my sketchbook, but I feel like the camera's working out decently right now and I don't want to jinx it. So, Mr. Garrett, Leo, and I were on FaceTime for about an hour and a half trying to figure this thing out, and the main thing we have isn't really working, and my brown's about to die. I'm going to switch over colors. But let's see if I can figure this, finish this one out. There we go. That'll do, right? Kind of, kind of looks like it's disappear on the sides. Anybody having problems with that? Everybody seeing that? So if I wanted to come in with some diagonals quick on the sides, uh, it would spice it up a little bit. So we're gonna switch color because my brown I think is issues. Move on to purple. How's that? Is that pick upable? I'm sorry, I'll do. I'll do, pig. I'll do. Okay, so we got our box. I'm going to come from my corners. Anybody trying this out right now, or are people just kind of watching and figuring out what to do later, or just killing time? Okay, so we're seeing it fall off in the directions here. Lighter objects are going to appear closer and darker objects are gonna appear farther. Okay, so that's why it's appearing like, very cool, John, we'd love to see your your uh, your pics of it. If you post pics and stories and send it to Instagram, we'll put it up live with this. Um, if you feel comfortable sharing. If not, just keep doing you. Okay, so. Okay, so I kind of see, kind of look like it goes like this. If we were to think this is the close part, and this is a close part. Does that make sense? Am I writing way too incredibly small? Closer. closer very cool okay so what we can do too is we can add a little bit of here and it'll round it out a little bit without actually adding any curved lines just straight lines Round us out a little bit. I think so. Yeah. It does look like a little ball in the middle, right? Little ball with some some sides. Okay. 
Now, instead of thinking about going the box always side to side or up or top to bottom, let's explore just a little bit of it, okay? So let's try to give a shape like this. Let's try to give a shape like this some definition and, and shading. Cool? So I'm just going to come and let's try Let's think of this part being our dark part and dark part over here. Okay? So let's use two different colors for this too. That might be, might be different. So we've got this. See it? And my line will come up. And it's also going to come up right there to try to mimic that portion as well. Okay? So very, very loose lines here. Try to show that. Try to blend them in. How's that looking? Looks all right. Looks pretty decent. Almost looks like the side of a vase. Vase, as I was instructed to say. Maybe we'll take our red. And maybe this will, if we darken this. So right now, it almost appears like the vase is in the front, right? And this side might be behind it, almost like an empty cavernous space in a photograph, right? Now let's see if we can darken this and try to see where that plays in relation to each other. We can use horizontal. There we go. It's got a nice gradient, a nice fade between them. I like that. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Okay. Now, are we picking up what we can do here with just some pens and some some directional shading? Okay, minus my brown, because my brown's a broken pen right now. It might be back in action, but we're not sure how long. All right, so Get to use to, get used to your pens and what they can do and their possibilities by using this cross crosshatch um, crosshatch shading technique and um, seeing how the two colors or three colors overlay with each other. You know, <laughs> my child. All right, so we got our blue. We're just gonna do simple. straight lines. Okay. And then let's take our, maybe our light green. Let's take our light green. We're just going to do simple vertical or uh, horizontal lines. And you can already see it's a whole different color of green you have now, right? We've got going on. So let's darken it up. See how that changes even more. There we go. You can see like this green right here is completely different than, than this color right here, yeah? All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and darken the blue from one side. Let's see what happens. We go so these are things that I do when I sketch all right so we see that I'm really happy with that pretty pre pretty satisfied with that Let's see here there we go I'm happy with that see how we have all those different values and and tints and colors just from those two now let's see for another one
Okay, so we've got that going on there. And let's add the purple over and see what's going on here. You can also add these always in the same direction too. That is not a problem at all. We see how we've got pretty interesting color we haven't found yet. Okay, and then let's see here. What if we throw some green on there too? Very dirty red almost, right? So don't think you have to have a lot of colors to make a lot of colors. You know, you can always overlay some of your colors to make other colors and that is totally fine. It's totally doable. It's what is happening right now with your computer screen as you're looking at it. You're seeing it in RGB, red, green, blue, which is just different iterations of red, greens, and blues illuminating your screen and making your eyes perceive different colors. And when you print, it's CMYK, um, cayenne, magenta, yellow, and uh, black is the K. So CMYK is the same way when you're printing uh, it only uses those those colors uh, predominantly. Um, now there are printing things that have different colors, different different dedicated colors. Rezo printing, uh, Rezo graph is one of those things where you can tell it what to print and how to print. But for the most part, it's just printing in those those four colors for print, or the three colors for um, uh, you're, see uh, you're seeing you're um, seeing in screen based, online based. Okay. So we're just going to keep playing around and see what different colors we can we can get after here. All right, so we got our green. And I'm just going to overlay it with black. the K in printed form, if you will. There we go. So it's pretty dark. That's all good. And maybe at the top we'll, load, or we'll do some lime green. Let's see what happens. Totally different color, huh? Pretty satisfied with it. I like it. Let's go in the middle. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do it from this side with the blue. You see that? I like that. My grass gone. So we'll get back into um, cross-hatching for a little bit by color mixing. And you can always come in with just your lines, just your straight up and down vertical lines. And you can, you can take them closer together. Okay. You can take them in the same, in the same uh, spread that you have right now and drop them away from each other and just those few times they hit will make it appear to be darker. Okay. You can also just come in from different angles. Right. So we could go in and we could do a, let's do a, A circle, my hand smudges all over it. I 
Real quick, a tip for making straight lines is to not use your hand, but use your whole arm. Pull your arm down if you want to make your straight lines. And people say, oh, I'm not an artist. I can't draw a straight line to save my life. Well, that's, that's totally okay because not a lot of straight lines um, in art. And a lot of times those straight lines are made with rulers, and that's fine. So we could make a square right in the middle by not actually making a square, by not drawing a square, but just do some some um, some cross hatching it. There we go. Now we have a square in the inside. Let's see. Um, let's see what else we could add to it. Should we make this circle? Sides of the circle. Uh, kind of appeared distant. How's that? Kind of looking just like a ring. Let's see if we can get some more variations in here. There we go. Not really happy with that, but sometimes you're not in life. Okay, so let's get back to shading of a face, yeah? Okay, so we're gonna bring back this that we did initially, just for, for giggles. Okay, you gotta drink water. Okie dokie. Let's see here. Um, so let's shade the eyes. Yeah. Let's just shade behind the eyes. So it's going to be darkest underneath the brows. Okay. So let's let's do some cross hatching there and see how that turns out. Mm, let's see here. What should we use? We'll use a purple. See how that's gonna turn out. All right, so I'm looking in a mirror in the camera to see my uh, underneath my eyebrows. Let's see here. Just give it some shading, cross hatching up.
And then on the side of the nose, if you have a side of the nose that's in the shadow, it's going to be a little bit darker on the outside of the nose. The tip, you don't really want to come and, and draw light colors or shadows on the tip. You want to come behind it. OEF Outlaw. Thanks, man. Drifting car. So now it gives the illusion that at this side of the nose is further away or there's a cast shadow. Okay, should we play with that? Should we make a cast shadow this way? Kind of give underneath the lips. Uh, let's give some underneath the lips some shadow. See here, let's turn it out. I'd like a little shade from this side. Oh, we have five. Thanks for hosting. And so let's see if we can't cast this side shadowed as well. I'm just using very small straight lines. Kind of ears, ears kind of filling in. Let's see here. Kind of see on my face. I've got some light on that side. And so let's see. It's, uh, let's see, a cast is coming up. Uh, you know, about an inch. Let's say, say about an inch, yeah? I'm just going to come up further on my cheek. Down shallower on my chin. Fill them in a little bit. It's filling in. We're getting a little bit of shadow. Let's go ahead and shadow underneath the eye a little bit. If you can see on my eye right here, right? Very small. See what happens. Let's go ahead and shade some hair. All right, so uh, this guy's kind of goofy looking anyway. Let's do some brown and, um, and some black. So we have the frame of the head, but this is really what's gonna, f what frames the, s the skull. Okay, and we're a little bit fatter than our skull on our top from our hair. Even though I've got short hair right now, you know, my skull is here. Oh, I'm a little camera guy. Okay. Um, so we're going to push that out a little bit. Push it out a little bit. Up. Sure. And let's go ahead and give some hair. Follow the lines of the head a little bit uh, initially, at least I like to do. 
and then to bring in shape and definition, then you can go crosswise to get other colors, and get other values, thicknesses, things like that. So Let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and part it the same way my hair is because I'm narcissistic, I guess, maybe. His hair might be too high. Figure it out. My brown is definitely biting it again. Let's it's alright, just a little Okay. So we got a big poofy Justin Bieber haircut apparently. That's all right, it's all good. Let's see how it looks thinner. We're going Justin Bieber. All right, so we're gonna give some shape and definition to the hair on the underline, on the sides. Very light. It's looking better. All right, I can live with that. I can live with that. If anyone's feeling dead, you know, that's okay. I'm not feeling very productive right now, and I think a lot of that's just haven't had any chances for breaks, you know, to go outside of my immediate environment. And I think that personally, I feel like it's hurting the creative world more because it's hard to just sit and work, 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 work without, you know, having friends, peers, quasi-colleagues to come and tell you things about your work that they're perceiving, and you just put your head down and keep work, 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 working. Making a lot, doing a lot, doesn't feel like a lot. It makes me feel whiny, but it's all good. It's all good. Anybody else out there not feeling productive or like they're doing much, even though they know they might actually be? Let me know. How are we looking here? Gave some color. Let's see if we can't get some more uniformity of the color right in the front. How are we looking there? Let's go ahead and give some color and depth on the side where that sun is shining off of. This is just cross hatching. I'm just doing them in the same at the same time. Yeah, John's feeling me. I'm doing it in the same time. I'm going up, down, left, right, you know, vertical, but I'm not scribbling. I'm not not sitting here and going like this. Man, Glaze Black sending papers. Oh boy. Fade it over. Let's 
See how it's looking lighter over here, like the sun's hitting it. And we got darker. So let's go ahead and shade underneath the hair a little bit. Can live with that. Can live with that. It's okay. It's all right. Let's see if he's got a if he's a squinter and he gets his little lines like I do. There we go. Add some to the lips. And stand out a little bit. We'll switch to red. See how that goes. And we'll dull up the red a little bit. So it doesn't look like, quite like lipstick. Let's take and let's dirty up the red a little bit. Ooh, not sure how that's looks a little not feeling that one. Let's see how some blue. How's that gonna look? Yeah, you know, get some definition. It's it can start to pop together. You can take other colors to try to give those little specialty lines. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Gives a little bit of definition. Yeah, this blue is going to work out. This blue is going to work out pretty decently. So we're just going to a little blue in the inside, a little blue on the bottom. see here. So I think it's a little, little crazy dark, so let's see about some green. What happens when the green comes in? Hey, uh, Miss OEF5, do you follow us on Instagram and, uh, and Facebook? Our Instagram is uh, creativevets. Yeah, I like those lips better, even though they are dark. I do like that better. Cool. Good, good. Let's go ahead and add some green around here. I'll see how that... See if that doesn't transform the piece a little bit. Might clean up the bottom with that uh, original lips I had in. Oh, right on, right on. I'm familiar now. Miss OEF5 says she streams for us on, on Thursdays. I'm familiar. Right, 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 right. There we go. So I can't add some definition to the nose before I do this.
you know, it knows that I like, I think it's hilarious. Um, or the nose is from uh, Rick and Morty. It almost looks like three little knuckles hanging down. I think they're hilarious. Real funny. So we lost a lot of definition by doing that. So we're just going to gain it back by adding that definition where we had it before. Coming back in. See here underneath. Give that nose, give our nose more of a cast shadow. lips see underneath right here where your cheek meets your lip you got a little bit of a shadow here almost outline the cheek we'll bring the cheek up a little bit give some temple definition Hair doesn't look like connected to the body. That's interesting. Not sure why that's going on. All right, so if you want to give some outside cast, some outside shadow, 
in, give some uh, some lines, kind of frame the work maybe. Definitely not needed. But I've got these these lines right here that I worked with that maybe we can get those to fade out a tiny bit. If not, that's okay. Yeah, so I use these pens when I sketch. Um, let's see if I've got any of my sketchbook. Currently in this one, I've got like 19 sketchbooks. No, none of these have this pen, but I've got a lot of them. And I'll look through and maybe I'll post them up on Creative Vets Instagram later. Anybody got any last few questions before I take off here? Anybody got any suggestions, things they'd like to see again? I'm planning to do a uh, same type of thing with markers, with art markers. Um, but definitely able to join that with regular, you know, kids Crayola. That's all good. I've actually, uh, actually make a lot of product projects with Crayola as well, like this right here. There it is. Is um, a pen I made out of Crayola crayon. Made a mold of a Sharpie and then just made some crayons out of it just for giggles, if you will. Um, so regular Crayola products, you know, um, kids coloring, if you will, are totally fine. And you can really, honestly, do a lot with them. You don't have to be you know, expensive Blick or other art um, products, you know? It can be, they can be cheap stuff. Like, you know, like these, these are just pilot pens, you know? I got all these, um, it was an eight pack. I'm missing a color or two, 10 pack maybe. Um, but I mean, they're cheap. Not too bad. So you can blend it all out. There we go. That looks all right. That's not too bad for learning some depths and some sketches and some things. So yeah, with cross hatching, you know, take one, take one color, one thickness ability of the line, and um, thank you. And you can do all types of different values and shapes, manipulations, and um, you know, you can make a really terrible portrait like I did. So, you know. Opportunities are endless. Um, so I'll stream here again. Um, trying for the end of the week. It might be over the weekend. And try and do something similar with markers. Um, and then some other stuff. And we'll do a question ask and answer of art material. One of these times Garrett Leo and I will stream together doing that. And um, yeah. We'll see how it goes. But um, thanks everybody. Appreciate you for tuning in and and uh, sticking around, and uh, we appreciate that. Go check out creativevets.org. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, on YouTube. Like and, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you're notified every time we go live. And, and um, awesome catch up. Uh, every time we go live, it'll notify you, and every time we put up a new video, it'll notify you, and that'll increase our uh, viewership abilities and to be able to reach more people. So... Go ahead and tell your friends. Uh, stop by the Instagram page. Come see, check us out. Also, feel free to write us messages on uh, Facebook, Instagram, other places that we may be to try to see what kind of art materials or um, techniques and things that you would like to see. So, all right. We appreciate everybody. See you guys later. Have a good one.